William Lawrence, a former U.S. diplomat, joining us from Washington, D.C. Professor, always a pleasure seeing you. Thank you for your time. Uh, so we've got Finland scrapping a deal with Russia to build a nuclear power plant and Germany finally backing an EU embargo on Russian energy. I mean, I think it's safe, safe to say that President Putin isn't driven by economics, but ideology. So does the West really expect these moves to stop the Kremlin? No, not in, in and of themselves. They are necessary but not sufficient uh, actions to bring this war to a um, quick end. Um, I would point out that this is not a ban on gas. It's, uh, it's just a block on oil if it happens. Hungary's firmly imposed, uh, opposed to it, uh, which buys some, um, so, some sort of short-term insurance for the Germans. Uh, but uh, um, there's another data point here which is important, which is that not only is Germany less de dependent on Russian oil than gas, but the margins on oil sales are much higher than the margins on gas sales for Russia. So you're actually impacting the Russian economy quicker by going after oil before gas. So in that sense, it's, it's a win-win all around, as long as uh, the countries most affected can have their gas supplies supplemented by gas coming from the southern Mediterranean or wherever else. There's enough gas in the world. What this is really about is the price and, uh, and, and whether Europe goes into a recession if there's a... Uh, too much of a price spike on, on, on energy supplies. Professor, May 9th is known as Russia's Victory Day and commemorates the Russians' defeat of the Nazis in 1945. What are your thoughts on the West's concerns that President Putin could move to formally declare war on U Ukraine by that date? Which is a move that could give the Kremlin access to reserve forces. I mean, it concerns Ukraine and the West only insofar as there may be a blip of an escalation on, in terms of the Russia's waging of the war. Uh, but it really makes no difference. It's it's mostly for um, uh, domestic Russian consumption because the Russians have been lied to for years and months about the issues at hand, and then they were lied to that this was a special military operation to protect Russian-speaking populations uh, in eastern Ukraine and decapitate a Nazi regime. These were both lies. Uh, so now, if if the date is used to simply admit to the Russian people that it's a it's actually a war, uh, then that um, uh, at least brings them up to speed on what's going on and and ends one piece of the Russian propaganda. What's really important here, though, is uh, uh, the way to get this war to end is to inflict as many military de uh, defeats on Russia as possible, and so this acceleration of weapons uh, coming into Ukraine uh, can can help with that. Uh, the, the caveat being that if uh, too many offensive Russians, uh, sorry, too many offensive weapons are given to the Ukrainians, that could prolong the war the other way if Ukraine starts trying to take back all of its captured territories from 2014 or even start uh, attacking Russia out of revenge or, or that sort of thing. So it's, 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 it's tricky now uh, to get this uh, a war to an end with as few concessions as possible uh, to Russia as Russia uh, you know, begins to adjust its rhetoric around this war. We'd love to leave there, Professor. Once again, thank you for your time.